you have to accept failures because you need those failures to get to get to the success. You've never seen any successful people without any failures. That's just clearly impossible at this point, right? Welcome to The Raquel Show. I love interviewing game changers who are constantly shaking things up. And my next guest is definitely a game changer who doesn't like to sit still. And it's Kevin Cruz, who is the founder and owner of multiple businesses, including Kinetic Real Estate. He's also been named Entrepreneur of the Year. This guy is full of wisdom and I can't wait to share it with all of you. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me over, Raquel. It's a pleasure. So I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're very busy to be on our show, and we're going to jump right into it. How many businesses do you currently own or are part of today? Um, I'm part of six. That's impressive, and that is absolutely amazing. And I know the first thing that's coming to people in our audience is how do you manage six businesses when I can barely manage one? Well, truthfully, you can't really manage all of them, right? I made my mistake when four years ago, I started you know, multiple companies at the same time where I'm just like ramping up. But what happened is like you, lo- you lost focus, right? When you, you know, when you focus on everything, you don't focus on anything, right? So that was my error and I, you know, I trials and errors that I did. So eventually those companies that we started, such as moving, staging, Airbnb, flipping, right? And cannabis, right? I became a silent partner for majority of it and board members while we're out and do any day-to-day operations where I'm only involved where there's a big decision happening or once a month, I just get an update from them. So after, you know, I shifted my focus to a year and a half ago where my focus now is purely just kinetic real estate. Just purely real estate, right? Don't talk to me about anything else. Uh, you know, just anything that you need from other companies is very small. Like it takes like two minutes to handle, or it's just like a quick conversation. So as a board member, so I had to give, you know, I wouldn't say give those up, but like I had to let go of those. And uh, obviously, it was pretty tough so our, for some of the partners we have, right? That I have for those people. But in the end of the day, you know, we're professional about it. We understood what it means. We understood what it meant, and. We're still partners until until then. So I love this because you had six different businesses. You made the decision to not be involved on a day-to-day to all of them, but really define your role. And when I hear six different businesses, this tells me you have a really big vision. Where does that vision and that drive come from? I think the biggest thing I think about especially like when times are tough or times are really good when you want to just like, you know, think about like, holy crap, you know, we've gotten this far, or like we achieved something amazing. It's uh, I just think about the people, like I think about my peoples and I think about being that example of from nothing to something. So it's not more so about like the money. It's more like the inspiration I can create to everyone around me, you know, coming from a third world country, right? Coming from the Philippines, right? I think about them. I think about the country. I think about like the, you know, like I would say like uh, more uh, people who wish to be here, right? But they cannot, you know, some of the unfortunate people that I know uh, that's dealing with, you know, time, you know, like bad times. Like I want to show them what's possible because I was that person. I was in their shoe and I was in that, you know, like where I really have to like, really go above and beyond call of duty in order to get to, you know, I mean, I'm not even where, you know, I'm not even like close to where I want to be. Right. But (laughs) that's the vision I have. It's more like just the, just the people around me, honestly, it's more like saying like leading by example. And I think that's the vision I have, like seeing how far we can really take this and how the legacy I can build. And another part too is, uh, (laughs) let's be real. There's not that many Filipinos out there really trying really hard right now terms of like, you know, being an entrepreneur, you don't see many of them. Well, way to represent the Filipino community. And I love that you took the inspiration and you want to lead by example. 
it's one thing to say it. And it's one thing to show up. And when you have even a business, there's challenges that happen. How do you continue to have that discipline to keep inspiring people even when times get tough? First of all, uh, times are tough uh, all the time to me. Balancing is uh, really hard for me and uh, disciplining my disappointments. It happens, right? Like one company can uh, you know, do so good all of a sudden and one of them is like, oh crap, we're short on this. So now it's like, okay, it evens out again. So it's like, it's a battle mentally, right? Like, because even though you're not involved fully in the business in other, you know, other things, it's still mentally in there, right? And especially, you know, I have a 15 month old uh, daughter and uh, I have a children. So, and I have a family. So it's like, there's so many things to juggle, right? So like, how do I discipline it? I think you develop it over time. I would say you learn it over time. You know what Gary Vee said, right? Uh, you have to double your failure rate in your 20s, uh, I think I quadrupled it, honestly. Like, you know, and because of that experience that I've had, like every time I deal with problems right now, I feel like it's not that crazy anymore, right? To me, it's like I've dealt with worse, I feel like. And, you know, that really brought the best out of me dealing with those mistakes. So I hope that answers that question. It definitely does. And they say it's a muscle experiences help you gain other perspectives. And it's a muscle that you, you know, going through failures becomes a muscle to go even bigger, right? Without those, you don't have bigger visions and bigger goals. Yep. So a little over two years, you decided to open up this brokerage And I would love to know, like, what made you decide, especially in the industry of real estate, there's very few people that will take a chance on opening their own brokerage. There's people that get their license. There's people that build teams, but to take on owning your own brokerage, where did you decide that that was the next step of your success or the next level of success for you? I don't create like a 10 year vision. I'm not one of those people, but I'm one of those people that if I see an opportunity, I do it. Sometimes I do it first before even thinking about it. Right. Sometimes I go backwards on a lot of things. Uh, I'm not sure if that's being an orthodox or not, but like, uh, to me, I've gotten this opportunity because of uh, the company called side Inc. Right. They were, they partner up with top agents and help you with uh, a lot of the operations and the back end things. And I've gotten the opportunity to be a partner with them. And I couldn't let go of that opportunity because that's only once in a lifetime, I would say, right? Because if I don't take that partnership, they would take another person who's another top agent, right? In our city. And I would lose that opportunity. And second part is I do like uh, building companies. I mean, as you can see, like the things that I've started, what we said earlier, what you asked me about, you know, the six things that we're um, involved in including kinetic real estate. Uh, I've also started many other different businesses not related to real estate or not even related to the industry, right? Such as vape shops, event production, sound and lighting production, even daycare, things like that, right? I just have this, uh, I think, I don't know if I was born with like, hey, being a, you know what, I'm going to build companies. Like, I don't know. But to me, it's like, I'm just one of those go-getters where I do it first before I even think about it. And does it work? Uh, Sometimes. But when you do it often enough, you're going to figure out a way to make it work. And because of that experience, the failures you've done in the past and success and selling the business and whatnot, every time there's an opportunity that comes to me, I know exactly how much time it will take me to be involved in something, how much investment it will take, how long will it take, all that things, right? And more importantly, the people. I invest in something not because of the opportunity, it's because of the people around it. It's people over a uh, business because it's the people will build the business, right? Mm-hmm. Like to say, for example, you partner up with, uh, you got a business opportunity to start a real estate company, right? Just say, you know, given an example, right? And that person that offered you that opportunity to start to partner up with them, for example, right? You know, like you look at their character and you look, you know, you're going to see like, what if times are bad, right? Well, how are you going to deal with that, right? What are you going to do to deal with that? So there's like a lot of angles you want to look at with that partner before you partner up with them. It's kind of like a marriage. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, just like, do they have a family, right? How are they outside uh, work? Do they party a lot? Like the core, what is this part of a person's core values? What is this person's core focus? Like, there's just a lot of things you look at, but like, as you experience so many things, I feel like 
you can pick up something really fast, whether this is going to be a good candidate or not. This is good because you talk about opportunities and then you talk about the talent and the people around that opportunity. And last year you started to build a leadership team with people, right? Yes. Just exactly what you said is sometimes you have to look at people and not necessarily the business because it's the people that actually will make the business. That's correct. All the time. And so what decided you to actually build a leadership team for your brokerage? And you did something very bold that most agents don't do in our industry is you hired a very top person for your company. So I'd love to kind of let the audience know what that is and what that journey was like for you. What made me you know, make somebody a top person right away? That experience that I've had, I think that person has the it. Or even though they may not have it yet, at least you see something that... Who did you hire first so that the audience can know? Uh, Well, in my company or... In your company. uh, Yeah, Gillian will be the first one. Gillian Aradaza will be the first person, right? She's been with me with Keller Williams, Better Homes, and moved to Kinetic with me as a co-founder. I saw something in her that like, she's loyal. Uh, She's, you know, she's, she's uh, driven. I remember when she used to drive from Vallejo, like I didn't even notice until she told me, like she told me, I didn't know that she lived in Vallejo. Like she used to drive from Vallejo, like five o'clock in the morning and meet me in, in the Bay area every day. To me, that's like, you can't teach drive to people. There's just no way, right? You're teaching a dead horse at that point. And for me to see that work ethic, especially having a embracing a daughter and working, that's a big quality for me to have because you're driven, right? And to me, uh, trust is everything to me. That's the foundation of everything, first of all. But loyalty is another thing as well. Was there some key things that I think are sometimes discounted in today's world? Sometimes people will choose talent, but the most successful business owners will say loyalty and trust over talent because I could teach them skills later. That's that's true that to me. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was talking to a, a serial entrepreneur last week. I flew to Costa Mesa and uh, just to meet with him. He's built organizations for 20 years. He has 24 streams of income, right? So it's like an eight-figure earner himself just for him, right? He told me like most of the people that stuck with me in the company, actually, all the people that stuck with me in the company right now are the ones that started with me. It's, it's, that's pretty powerful to me I mean, for someone building it for 20 years, right? So it's like he's 30 eight right now or 37 years old. So he's been doing, he's been a hustler for 20, you know, he's been hustling and grinding and building things for many, many years now, two decades now. And he said that, you know, so is it better to hire somebody who's top agent who just, you know, you brought on, or is it better to build somebody up from the start and create that loyalty and trust, right? So it's like, it's a battle, right? I mean, I'm not saying like, we shouldn't hire any top agents, but like, I'm just saying like, he stated his own facts on that one. So that was a good, like, you know, like a wall factor for me. Yeah. And you hired a president last year for your company, which most people can't do or have that ego of like, maybe I don't need a president. What decided you to number one, as we're talking about people go after and say, Hey, I'm going to hire a president and it's going to be somebody that I, that I trust versus a top producer. Uh, can I say a story? Maybe that would... You yeah, know. for sure. The CEO and uh, co-founder of Side Inc., his name is uh, Guy Gao. I learned a lot from him where it's like, you know, about ego and stuff. Like he was like indirectly telling me a few things. I mean, I'm sure off the bat, he knew that I had ego when I met him. I remember like putting my Rolex, you know, meeting with him for the first time. I had my Rolex on. I was like pulling up my sleeve like this, thinking I was like cool and stuff. And he was wearing like a sweater with Yeezys. Like, and then jogging pants. I'm all like, okay, like, you know, what I didn't know, like how big shot is, right? We didn't know like who he was in the industry, <laughs> built a company for a few billion in five years, right? Like he said something about like, what is, what side means, right? Side Inc. He said that, you know, it's not about side Inc, right? Like even if you go online, you're not going to see much about them. So what they do is they help companies build, build something now. They help top agents build their own brand. So that takes away the ego right away, right? You're not promoting like side ink is the shit, right? It's more like these agents are the ones doing it. And I started to realize the core values he really has, right? That's over time I talked to him. 
And I think I started dropping my ego back then. And honestly, right, when I met you uh, last year, uh, you know, started coaching with you last year, you're like a game changer to us, right? Uh, that's from the bottom of my heart. And I just think like over time, all these things, right? And meeting one, uh, you know, is a big servant of God. And like ego is like the last thing he has right now at this point, right? If you just know him, like you're going to see like the type of character he portrays, right? The type of character he has. I think all this combination that I had, like I, had, like I, I automatically just dropped my ego, and it's not about, it's not about me anymore, right? I mean, people already know I'm the founder of the company, right? People already know that, right? But I don't, title and stuff doesn't really like, you know, people started calling me CEO, like and stuff like that, but I never called myself like CEO, you know. Maybe I posted it once on Instagram, you know, like my social media manager posted it, right? But like, I never did. People would just call me that, right? Like a title is earned. And a title is earned. And I just saw that he can bring something to the, you know, he can put something, bring something to the table that I wouldn't be able to bring in overall. You know, there's a couple of things to unpack in that, that I think the listeners, I'm sure that they're going to want to rewind and listen to it is one through meeting other people. And I think that this happens a lot as you meet more successful people you start to look at things a little differently when you're still in the ego game, right? Or when somebody's talking crap about you, they say they probably aren't as successful. So never take advice or information from somebody that doesn't have the stats. Yeah. Because it's deformation in your brain. That's true. If no one is talking smack, you're not doing something right too, right? So right. And <laughs> I'm haters at some point, you know. <laughs> what was key about that is like you started to drop your ego, right? Because you started mm-hmm. to see like this guy had built, and believe it or not, I've met a lot of people that are in t-shirts and shorts, and you would be it, it's it's amazing how much wealth they have, not only in finance, but in like assets and in companies and in relationships. Mm-hmm. All, and they do a lot of their meetings in t-shirts and shorts or slippers or whatever. Right. And I think that you just start to elevate into a bigger mission. And you said it like, it's never about the ego or about the money. It's really about something bigger. Yes. And it starts with people. I feel like it's really just people, leadership and people core. And yeah, I'm fascinated by you, Kevin is you have a lot of friends that are part of your companies. And I'm sure people have heard like never get in business with your friends. Yeah. If there is a stat out there that's against that and that really plays at a high level, it's this guy that you are listening to or or maybe even seeing um, online is how do you protect yourself, number one, from like the friendship and the business? I have a lot of experiences with this, by the way. <laughs> the trust level and the respect level. That's always a like a tag of war or something, right? Because you trust them, but some of the people you work with, they might not, they may not respect you the way you know other people respect you because they know you too much. They know they know deep, deep inside they know you. <laughs> they say you can't be a mayor in your <laughs> they know all the shit that you've done, yeah. you know. So but they trust you, but there's no like full respect. It's like, oh, you know, I can be late on a meeting, blah, 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 right? Like, it doesn't matter. You know, it's Kevin. Like, I know him. We're friends. You know, I love him. You know, he loves me. Like, you know, oh my God, I've been through that. Like, I would say like more than a handful of times. Like, uh, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> First of all, it's a challenge, but it's something that you you can overcome and learn. The biggest thing you have to know is like, you got to know the reason why you're in business with them. You have to know why you're in business with them, right? Like, I feel like, you know, doing business together is... a uh, I think it's a great thing overall, okay? As long as you pick the right one, the right friends, right? Because in business, right? I mean, we all have a goal, right? I mean, every time I start a business, obviously we have a goal, right? I mean, rather than them being in a job, for example, right? Working stuff, like what if we just do business together? So much things I can dissect to this. I feel like this is more of like a more... What would you give as far as advice? Because you have a lot of different companies, a lot of different friends as partners. If there's an issue or if there is a certain way how you felt about what they did, even if it's a small thing like, hey, uh, you know, uh, why did you say that in front of uh, everyone, you know, or why, you know, like during a meeting or like 
like, well, let's just say uh, there's somebody in there, like even one person, and uh, you said something that ticked me off or like, you know, that pissed them off. You want to talk about it right away, immediately, effectively, like right away. Just be like, hey, you know, uh, we're friends and all, but I don't appreciate that. Like, uh, can you can you not do that again? There has to be a level of professionalism and uh, boundaries. You basically want to just keep it real with each other. Because if you just keep letting things go and letting things go, it's gonna, it's not good. I mean, they're like, oh, it's okay. You know, he said that to me, but deep inside you're pissed off about it. That's not going to be good in the future. Communication is the key. And with friends, communication can be a pretty hard thing to do because you guys are friends. Yeah. You operate differently when you're friends and then when you're in business. Yes. What I hear you had said was address any situations immediately when things occur. When things occur immediately, you want to do it, but you don't want to do it like a boss person, like do it as a homie level, like, you know, just do it in a, in a homie level where they, they know that you care and, you know, they may, they may get bothered when you tell them the truth and stuff, but they sleep on it overnight. Trust me, the next day, they're cool about it. And then two, you said, protect your boundaries. Make sure you guys have boundaries when it comes to the friendship and when it comes to the business. Correct. Communication yeah. is key in everything. Everything is communication, yes, which happens to be more difficult with, with more challenging with friends. But mm-hmm. once you overcome that, I think it's the best thing, right? Because what you said earlier about, you know, loyalty and trust, those are the two things already. Once you build that up, loyalty and trust is like, you know, over talent uh, all day, all day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I have always been impressed with your drive, your your ability to take risk, your ability to implement and execute fast, and your thirst for like constantly growing and investing. I've yet to meet a lot of people that are very strategic and are constantly investing. Why do you continue to do it at such a high level? And especially with the success that you've had. I mean, I'm not even there yet. Honestly, I don't consider myself successful. There's a lot of things. You are. Uh, He's totally uh, discounting it. Yeah, but I'm like deep inside. I'm like, you know, it's it's like, it's like normal to me now. You know, like it's normal. I don't see it. I really don't. Uh, Like that's an ego. Maybe I drop. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) What keeps me going. And constantly like growing and like learning about new things. (laughs) I mean, every time I talk to you, you're always constantly learning about things, constantly investing in your growth seminars, people, right? Like you just said, you went to Costa Mesa and you're constantly like learning. You know, I have this philosophy, right? You don't know what you don't know. I went to, uh, I spent like a lot of money on this uh, event. It was like five figures close to like, you know, yeah, a lot of uh, five figures to go to this two-day training. It's Grant Cardone's uh, CEO of the company, Brandon Dawson. And he talked about this pie chart, right? I mean, you pay that much money, you're going to listen to every single word they said, right? And he said something about like, you know, the pie chart, like you're basically like not even 1% of what you know. I feel like there's so much things out there that's just like, like, holy shit factor. Like, I did not even know about that. You know, I've seen a lot of things I feel like, but like, there's some things where just like, that still like drives me crazy. Like, how is that even possible, right? And going to this type of like events and networking and like seminars and stuff, like there's always something that you pick up. And I always believe that motivation is kind of like, a, it wears off like a deodorant, right? You always want to keep yourself going because motivation wears off. Like if you're in the the office every day, like it's going to wear off over time. Like you got to figure something out to keep yourself like in that high energy. And like, I don't know why you keep doing what I'm doing. I still, I'm still trying to figure that out, to be honest with you. Like why I keep doing what I'm doing. All I know deep inside and me is like, you know, I do want to write a book later on. I do want to inspire the Filipino community. I want to be one of those people like being, you know, like inspiration, do public speaking later on with like thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, the omnipresence, right? Like I'm always inspired by, it's funny, I was talking to uh, my social media manager like two weeks ago. It just came into my head. I'm all like, let's do what Gary Vee is doing. I said that. What does that entail? Uh, three times a post on social, three times, three posts a day on social media. He's everywhere you ever see. You see him everywhere. I don't care where it is. You are going to see him. I want to create that and 
like I don't know, it's a credibility. Like I don't know what 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 what, 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 what built out of it. Yeah. But, I, uh, I, yeah, I'm not to answer that question. Right That's um, really good that you say that because it sounds to me that if you're not growing, you're dying, right? We've all heard that and you're constantly growing, but you're also constantly implementing and there's things that stick with you. And that's why you continue to invest in yourself. So let me ask you this. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken in business? Biggest risk. How do you define that financially or? Biggest risk that you've ever taken that as you look back at all your different companies, the biggest risk that gave you the big, maybe even the biggest lesson that you're, you were so thankful that it happened or gave you the biggest reward. What's the biggest risk you've taken? I think leaving, uh, leaving my current brokerage, brokerage to start kinetic is one of them for sure, because I had something great going, you know, I became from you know, rookie of the year, you know, entrepreneur of the year, top agent in the office. And after that, like top five in the entire Northern California in that brokerage. So I thought there was like something really good going on already. And me starting my own, right? Obviously, I was with like three people. I was like, okay, like, the hell are we going to do? We have no office, right? Another factor, we have no printer. Number three, like we have no broker, basically like, you know, we're going to lose uh, a lot of, you know, not lose, but like losing touch with like things that you need help with. Uh, that's only like my, by starting off my fourth year. So just imagine like, you know, you're still brand spanking new, like considering your first year is part-time, like, and to start something on your own, you know, I even have to lease an office, uh, I call lease an office with my moving company. And yeah, it was like, we had no office specifically. Like it was just like a round table on the on the public area. We were just sitting there all the time. Even though we helped 82 families that year, it was like, holy crap, like what are we doing? You know, like, but that's what we did. Uh, that was one of my biggest risks because you know, real estate is the one that really provided me the bread and butter. I've never seen uh more than a hundred thousand in my pocket in a year. Made I never made more than a hundred thousand until I was 28. I love that. I love that you, number one, you took the risk. You saw something bigger for you, even though you were sitting on what most people would say, wow, top five, top in the, in Northern California. And yet you still took a risk. And what'd you guys do last year? Cause you guys had a phenomenal year last year. Well, first year I did uh 50, we did 82, help 82 families. Right. And uh, last year we did 248 families last year. That's amazing. And it all start, stemmed from you taking a risk. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, no risk, no reward. I mean, everybody, everybody, their mom says that. Everybody, their mom knows about that, but it's true. You have you to live it. You have to know that you're going to experience something really challenging. And you have to know, you have to accept and you have to accept first that you're going to fail at one point. Yeah. You're not, but it's not about, you know, panicking. You have to pivot really fast. That's what starting a company, that's what being an entrepreneur or businessman is. You have to accept failures because you need those failures to get to get you the success. You've never seen any successful people without any failures. That's just clearly impossible at this point, right? You know, Mike Tyson said, right? You know, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? So most of these people, they they plan, they plan, they plan. They're in a drawing board, they plan. But nothing is executed, even for a real estate sales agent. Like I see people who's like practicing and practicing. You just got to go out there and do it. Make the call. Are you going to stutter? Yes. Are you going to be nervous? Yes. Are you going to deal with objections? Yes. But even if you practice objection handling, but if you don't actually deal with it, like you're never going to learn. Yeah, that's so true. You got to take action at the end of the day. You can have the best mentors, the best strategies. And that's what I love about you. It really wasn't me, Raquel, as a game changer. And I want to say thank you even for saying that, but it was really Kevin that did the work, right? It was him that actually did the work and took the action. And as we wrap up our show, you know, I'm always big on playing bigger in business and in life. What's one thing that you do, Kevin, to play bigger? I'm not sure how long I can hold this, but uh, I dropped alcohol. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, that's a, you know, I'm almost two months of no alcohol now, uh, 50, 55 days or 56 days now. Right. And that's one thing, right. To play bigger, you know, uh, number two is, you know, we read every month, new books every month. 
as a leadership to learn in self-development. I mean, for the company wise, we're going to help 500, 500 families this year, uh, bring in a, you know, hundred total uh, agents in our company. We're at like 50 now and just develop uh, leaders and uh, just keep going. This is so amazing and so good. Where can people connect and find with you? You've got some big goals. And not only what I heard is you want to help a lot of people. So where yeah. can people connect with you? Uh, Instagram, the Bay Area Realtor with a DHE in it, uh, DHE Bay Area Realtor, uh, Facebook, or yeah, I think those are the two things mainly. Yeah. So connect with Kevin. If you want to send him a message on Instagram, the Bay Area Realtor, Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. If you have enjoyed this episode, please share it on Instagram and tag the Bay Area Realtor. And we'll also put it in the show notes. I appreciate having you on our show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Appreciate you.